bombshell revelation by Sabine Hassenfeld about scientific fraud in high energy physics. Your problem is that you're lying to the people who pay you. Your problem is that you're cowards without a shred of scientific integrity. Welcome to Real Physics. Now what happened? Sabine Hossenfelder, who is a science critic as I am, published an email in which a high energy physicist explicitly admitted scientific fraud when he applied for grant money based on knowingly untrue premises. That's word by word what he said. I have some trade secrets. For example, I am one of the authors of the so-called blah blah model, pretty useless stuff old refurbished blah blah with a couple of new blows and whistles but if people buy this crap and it helps them to get grants who cares let that sink in and why this well particle physicists want to be employed some of them have families and young children some of them are already too old to get unemployment elsewhere for some of them academia is the only way to get US visa wow Hasenfelder comments. What's that good for? It's good for keeping particle physicists employed. Because some of them have families and it'd be unfair if they had to do something useful for their income, wouldn't it? Now, I have been saying this for a long time that the standard model is nonsense, that particle physics is in a dead end, that scientists are not sincere anymore. It was kind of obvious, but now for the first time we have evidence. All this is admittedly a scam. And a lot of people have noted this. One of my favorite authors is Bruce G. Charlton. He said, it is entirely normal and unremarkable for ordinary scientists to spend their entire professional life doing work they know in their hearts to be trivial or bogus. And now we have concrete proof in one case. And keep in mind, this not only refers to theory, but I also included in my critique experimental particle physics. And that's also what the guy admits. He talks about beyond the standard model builders. And but he also talks about experimentalists who survive hiding inside big multi tera electron volt collaborations. And look at this. It's really a justification as criminals used to do. Well, I stole taxpayer money, but everyone else does that too, right? But it's one thing if you commit scientific fraud and get unjustified fame, and it's just that. But still another thing, if you get money for it. Now we enter legal territory and I just briefly asked ChatGPT what about the US legal system. In Germany, it would be clearly a fraudulent act, but here are some of the US Legislations that might be relevant, false claims act, false statements, mail and wire fraud, and yeah, uh, grant fraud. I don't know the details, it's not even my business, but certainly in the US it will be not legal to get grants under false premises. And it's interesting where we could investigate here. Sabine Hassenfelder mentions top institution in the United States. I don't know if it's coincidence or not, but shortly after she mentions the deep underground neutrino experiment and also the electron ion collider. Yeah, maybe there will be an investigation, maybe not, maybe it's time bared. But I'm not even sure if Hassenfelder is entitled to disclose the name of the guy. Because is she a lawyer? No. Is she a journalist? I don't know. And keep in mind, this gentleman is not a whistleblower. It's just a little grifter who stupidly admitted his moral wrongdoing while pushing other people to hide it. Listen. I'd like to ask you next time, think not only about short-term personal benefits, but about the community in general. Do you understand what consequences your publication might bring for our community? Well, I'm not sure this will be considered a criminal offense, but certainly it could be and it will be something Elon Musk with his dodge will enjoy looking into. The only way to fix the problem is to stop paying them, to stop paying them, to stop paying them. Well, at the end, as Mark Twain said, it's easier to fool people than to convince them that they have been fooled. 
but I really would enjoy if the problem eventually becomes public. I said in my book the problem is that physicists not only have no skin in their taxpayer funded game, but due to the missing link to anything real, there is no stock market crashes that could illustrate the usefulness of what they were doing. And you know, I also described the typical behavior of these kind of physicists. Give us more money and we will find something that will somehow interpret and celebrate as confirmation of our standard models. Or we might find nothing at all, which would be even more awesome because it points to physics beyond the standard model. That narrative is thoroughly mendacious. It should go something like, we have no idea, we are aware that, we are not predicting anything and we feel quite clearly that we are at the dead end. Before you pull the plug on our funding, we will throw a lot of dust in your eyes. So now I really hope that this fraudulent and also scientifically disastrous behavior will come to an end. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.